Hi, and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Unleashed. I am your host, Bridget Quinn, and you can find me on all social media at B. Quinn Realtor. And I'm Regan Hildebrand with Home Team Realty Group, and you can find me on all social media at Regan. Welcome, Bridget. Welcome, Regan. How was your weekend? Oh, it was full of injuries and... Oh, no. Uh, yeah, kids, you know, sporting events. Put them Always in a bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gosh. Uh, yeah, so, you know, just a, a few Band-Aids and... We're all good to go. Everybody okay, though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, best can be. <laughs> <laughs> I hear best you. Best can be. One. I don't know. You know, we just get, we, you know, kids get hurt and it's always so fun. So do we but, as we get older, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we get hurt, like, emotionally by real estate. Well, more than we do, like, physically, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about your weekend? It was good. Um, decided to go up to the mountains for a little bit and check out the, the leaves that are changing mm-hmm. and... Seeing ever everything up there and the check. beautiful North Carolina mountains. Yes, if you haven't been, it's definitely worth checking out. And uh, mm-hmm. went to the little town of Blowing Rock and I love surrounding. Blowing Rock. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. And all, of course, all the little um, the shops that are around the town and mm-hmm. get a few the little parkway. The parkway and get a little few goodies coming back. And yeah, that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Pick up any apples? No, I did not. Mm. Apples were really, really expensive this time. Yeah, Which, I mean everything. they normally are. They normally are because you're you're getting straight from you know the apple grove, but I'm paying for the uh, the premium. Yeah, yeah, super premium. But they all looked really good. We got some, we got some jam though. Jam. We got yep. some jam. <laughs> yep. As a kid, we'd drive up and my dad would have to stop and get cider. Oh. Uh, I think this was back when you could still buy like the unpasteurized jugs, the cider. Jugs of you know, it, yeah. like the real mm. straight from the press stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was. Uh, that's that's. The, the mother of it <laughs> yeah yeah that was the good stuff that's yeah. good I, yeah. I, I see you finally decided to join in on some star I, I, wars yeah, t-shirts this, this, this week. was a lovely gift from my fiance so a little late to the party but a little late you know. to the party and today in honor of uh the last jedi i'm you got supporting your, chewbacca with the porgs the porgs ah. plenty of porgs <laughs> <laughs> as long as he doesn't eat them like chicken right yeah yeah <laughs> So what about uh, what about the world of real estate? What's going on? Still same old, same old, chugging along as I say, yeah. and just ready for uh, ready for some more some more buyers, buyers, sellers, mm-hmm. whatever. What Anything we got we going get. on? Got some stuff in the works, but yeah. um, I find that some people are wanting to wait till to the new year. With now you're kind of getting into that weird holiday commotion going on and yep. you know the plans and so they're of course you know kind of concerned about timing of that so you try to steer them yep. obviously as soon as possible but i think <clears> beneficial <throat> for some of them that want to buy and sell they're going to try to wait till the start of the new year so yeah historically october november are our slowest months mm-hmm. starts um, to slow down yeah you know december obviously uh, not i mean i think some people gear up a little bit for the first of the year in december they start their search mm-hmm. but yeah, historically, we always see a lot less activity, which we have time for the trips to Blowing Rock and things like that for ourselves. So it's good to kind of sometimes have less on your plate at this time of year. Well, reevaluate where you're at and yeah. see what's coming up. And do the New Year planning, do the right? Do New Year planning and go yeah. from there. So. Yeah, it's, it's weird, though, because we went from last year in October and November were crazy because La- every nothing last slowed down. Last year was... I felt like I was just scrambling or like a chicken with my head cut off mm-hmm. for so much of, I mean, all year, but especially towards the end when I definitely wasn't expecting it. Yeah. We were all trying to, you know, take the normal pause of getting ready for, you know, a little bit of a break, catch mm-hmm. our breath, and it never really happened. So it's it's nice to be back in that, that kind of old mindset of right. we can actually do some first pause, of the year take planning. take a break. And- yeah. We go from there yeah yeah i mean it definitely feels like it's slowed down i was looking at new listings and buyer activity and it's definitely still you know matching the historic but of course there's that tepidation with the rates still um of people just not wanting to get off the fence to begin with no um and well I, think- I mean that's understandable with with the rates at as high as they are over the past couple of years you know it's it's they're not it's not as i don't know what's what i'm trying to say but it's like they're not putting it into to sixth gear where they were yeah. this time last year when the rate was there's no feeling 3% of, of like okay 
Yeah, it's an ex- expensive purchase price, but the interest rates are so low that I'm actually paying way less for yeah. a house that's worth so much more. Right. Yeah. yeah. They the sense of urgency of like everything can keep happening fast because the rates, like you said, are so low. Mm-hmm. No one really cared what the prices look like. Right. Uh, but now it's the the flip side, and I don't think people realize that prices are going down. I saw something came out uh, saying that Fannie Mae, uh, the economic advisors from Fannie Mae, uh, forecasting a twenty three percent across the board uh, decline in prices mm. for homes. That's huge, um, but you know it, that kind of creates, I think, in some minds, some panic sure. for people who paid at the top well end. they they hope that their their house is still worth what they paid yeah yeah and i mean for some people that were you know as we said last time that were throwing the money out <clears throat> right when you're paying three to five percent over and sometimes ten plus percent over appraised value and now you're hearing that prices are going to decline it's scary. It's yeah. You better be willing to ride it out and stay in that house until the 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 change catches up to mm-hmm. you, right? Mm-hmm. And it will happen. Sure. I, I I don't see any. There's nothing that shows that prices won't eventually come back up to that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still expect to well, see and seven I think to. It, it's, I think the thing to to realize here is not necessarily value is decreasing it's the purchase price of the homes that's decreasing because yep. the, the houses that you purchase at for the most part i think are you know still valued very high yeah but people are going to pay less they're going to pay yeah. less now for it so right it's, you know but yeah in the, in the end what that translates to so if you have a neighborhood where previously let's say it was selling for four hundred thousands mm-hmm. on average or let's actually do it by square foot let's say it was selling for two hundred dollars a square foot in this one neighborhood of you know let's call it three to five hundred homes and now people aren't willing to pay two hundred dollars a square foot because they want to get a value they want to make some offset that interest rate that we talked about before it might drop to 190 or 195 mm-hmm. a square foot but there's still enough data to show that, in, at least in our market, with the growth, that we'll be back to that $200 a square foot in plenty of time. It's just people are having to use the tool. And that's what I tell every buyer. You're going to have to be a hard negotiator. You do. Yeah, to, as we said last time, too, yeah. you know, you've got to be that savvy buyer. Yeah. You got you got to be really like just putting thought into it. Like, where can I find a good deal mm-hmm. to make my money go further, right. so that the interest rate hit doesn't hurt you as much? I mean, because yeah, if you're if you are the people that bought last year and now you're sitting on that house that you pay ten percent more over mm-hmm. what it was appraised for, and you better be happy with your interest rate, really happy and happy with well, the home. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're probably going to be staying there a while. Mm-hmm. If you have to sell, though... You might be taking the, on you, the loss side. Yeah, you might sure. be paying some, losing some money at the, the closing mm-hmm. table. Not as much sell. equity, right? Yeah, yeah. You might you might be upside down a little bit. But, I mean, you know, if you're not happy with your interest rate, then unfortunately the, the golden opportunities are gone. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, you know, we've got several lender friends that we talk to on a pretty regular basis, and it was... Once these rates started to go back up, you know, start of the year, it's a screeching halt for yeah. all the refis. There's no more refi business no. to I be mean, had. No, I mean, you know, unless you had an absolute horrible interest rate, which I think most people, if they, you know, took the advantage of the low rates last year and before to say, okay, maybe we had 8%, so now let's refi, and maybe they were at a 35 or a 4 Yeah. You're, who wants to refi to get no. 6% plus? Currently. Right. I mean, unless unless you have to or, you know, there's certain things that you may need to. But but generally speaking, lenders are not doing refis. Nope. Nope. And they're all clamoring for that purchase business, what Mm -hmm. little there is of it right now. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a tough time of year regardless of what the market's doing. Um, You know, I I had a text message this morning from some lender I'd never heard of asking me to set up an appointment to talk with their (laughs) their boss and, you know, see how they can benefit. Hey, you got to find business somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I really, I lament, though, that unpersonal, impersonal uh, approach to trying to 
get business done. Mm-hmm. And I understand we're in a time of text messages and everything's done, you know, through that more connected way because, yeah, I'm going to unsubscribe if you send me a marketing email. Yes, I'm going to probably ask you to remove me from your list if you call me. But if you text me, though, and it's not even you text me, it's your assistant, then I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we have enough people that reach out to us personally. Right. And I mean, it's one thing for it to be the the people that we have connections with already to say, hey, you know, got anything going on or hey, you know, let me tell you about a new program yeah. or something or hey, just haven't even touched base with you for a while. Just yeah, just reaching out and touching, you know, hey, I'm still yeah. here. Still alive. Still alive. Still kicking. Happy to you help know. if we need me. Right. Yeah. Just that that's a little bit different. That's fine. Yeah. It's sure. just the ones you don't have any relationship to begin with. So you're sending out this and I'm sure it's Email copied and pasted yeah. text message to these agents. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, all of our phone numbers, emails are out there. Yeah. And so, yeah, being inundated with this. And I try not to do that myself. Um, you know, with when I'm trying to find business, I'm asking for a referral from past clients. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's where we get our, our continued business from. And there's that cliche saying in real estate the the best um the best thing you can give me is, is a, referral. a referral yes and it's true it is true though the gift that keeps on giving it does that's how our business keeps going yeah. we can't sit here and keep doing real estate if we don't have people that are advocating no. for us and saying hey bridget was a great agent sure. um you know to a co-worker i think you should well, call yeah, bridget I mean, you know i mean uh, that's how i've gotten <clears throat> several several clients from is, yeah. is from referrals of a lot of my friends or family or whatnot and i mean it's, it's, it's that's, that's where it's the at. organic building of the business. And, you know, if we were aiming this at agents, I think we could go into a much longer Dia tribe. Uh, but yeah, it, that's where we, I think, typically have built our business. Um, you know, we get it from also those connected mm-hmm. pieces. Like mm-hmm. your husband, Tony, is a handyman. So yeah. if he's doing work, for a client, obviously, he's going to recommend you. If well, it's, I hope he's not recommending some I, other I, realtor. You got a bigger conversation <laughs> going on there. Yeah. And on the flip side, too, you know, when we're doing work uh, yep. with uh, with clients, we're recommending those people There's that are people, close to sure. us. You know, I, I, I my fiance is a, an interior designer and project manager, so it's really easy for me to go sure. in. Hey, you know, if, <laughs> this house looks great, but, you know, if you want to... Totally you want to gut it. the kitchen, yep. you got to call Amy, the plumb line, <laughs> uh, Tony's handyman business, that's right, that's if, you, right. if, you, if, you, if you need some work there. So we have these interconnected pieces that we refer through, and I really wish that other, like the lending partners, would understand that importance as well sure. of going that route. Like if, if you're going to say, hey, recommend my business to a, one of your clients. Got to share and, the value. Yeah, and your home lending, uh, dot com or you know, uh, big red lender.com, whatever it is. Well, I got to have something to say to my clients mm-hmm. of other past clients have used them have or I personally right. did business with these people. So I vouch for them <laughs> and I've had, a, you know, we've both been in the same boat. We've had plenty of vendors, mortgage lenders that we have had good experiences with and we're happy to put them out there, sure. but I'm not going to put somebody out there just cause they sent me a text message. Right? <laughs> no, not at all. No, you got to prove your worth to me. You got to do something. You got to earn so, it. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, but that's, that's kind of where we are, I think, at this time of the year uh, yeah, is that we're seeing all these people come in and they're making plans just like we are right. for what are they going to do to build their business for the upcoming year. And I, I love talking to, different people that can give different perspectives on things we're talking before yeah we're talking before uh, we hit um, a record on this that i had a past client who's now in the mortgage business themselves Mm -hmm. and was telling me about a really cool product where it's a dscr loan which basically means that if you're an investor and you're looking for something that's going to be income generating you can use that income to prove you know that you have the the means to, to get the loan, get basically. The loan, right? Yeah, so a lot of cool little things that we learn about. Well, sure, every every lender or every contractor or whoever you're working with is going to have their own little nuances of what they do or what they can do for you, so. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and so I think, you know, I'm talking about this time of year and slowing down, I like to use it to build kind of my... Um, portfolio. My, yeah, portfolio, but also to educate 
hopefully that's what we've been doing somewhat hopefully, with our, yeah. our, our podcast. And yeah, and it, it gives us time to learn ourselves as well. Yeah. Do we? Well, I, I've got one. I've got one of my CEs in the in the in the bucket. Uh, I'm done for the year. You're done. Nice. Done. Yeah. So for those who don't know, we have to take continuing education <sighs> to classes. To be a realtor, you um, are supposed to take eight hours of continued education. In North Carolina, with a, a yeah. General update and then an elective of your choice. So yeah. I like to get them done. You know, we have until June to have them done, but I get them June done of the following year. Yeah. Get them done as quickly as possible because, hey, it's helpful for me just to know if there's anything that I should be aware of changing-wise, yeah. you know, forms of change back in July every year. So it's it's just good to know and yeah, to we, pass along that, as you say, that education to it, everybody else. When things change, yeah, we get the general update if you're just a uh, broker in North Carolina or real estate agent. And then if you're a broker in charge or broker in charge eligible, you take what's called a broker in charge update, mm-hmm. which is a little bit more in depth about just running the it business. It is, right. Um, but yeah, we get good updates from that kind of stuff. Fantastic. And then we get a, a chance to take an elective. Mm-hmm. And I've had, I'm actually currently looking for a good elective that kind of fits that niche, but they get, you know, some specific niche stuff that we can take mm-hmm. advantage of. What does, which one did you do this year? I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> Well, I took the course to become BIC eligible, so oh, taking that's the right. course so that, so took care did... of my elective this year, nice. and then I took the BIC, uh, BIC eligible actual general update, so yeah. I'm good to go on that. But generally, I like to know just, like, uh, I think I took um, mortgage loan lending one year, and mm-hmm. I took uh, the pitfalls or, like, mistakes realtors make. Yeah. I mean, we don't make any don't make any. I was going to say, that had to be a short class, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. That should have been worth more than four hours of <laughs> credit. Oh man. Oh, I'm sure we could scour the MLS and just find a few mistakes ourselves. A few, a few. Um, yeah, I saw a listing uh, the other day, just off on tangent, just saw a listing the other day that said it was 5,266 acres. Yeah, we talked the about The aerial view didn't look like yeah, that. No. no, it didn't look like 5,000 no. acres to me. Not um, at all. Yeah, I've taken some courses. I took one during COVID that was, uh, and I think you may have taken the same one, the Strategic strategic Pricing, pricing Specialist. Yep. That was a good one. That was a good one. That gave you only also, not only the CE credit, but it also gave you a designation. Designation, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, and those are fun. Like, I, was, I was looking up some ones about uh, maybe even military relocation. I mm-hmm. think that was coming up soon And because I'm yeah. also EPRO certified as well. For <clears throat> and for those green. listening, what is EPRO? Going green, <laughs> go green, go green, and and uh, certified on like uh, making sure you're secure with all the electronic and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Are you not telling anybody your password? Right. Um, <laughs> golly, that the amount of stuff as far as fraud that we have to protect people from. It's kind of nice to have that a little bit extra. I remember with the strategic pricing specialist, it was interesting because it kind of. And this was, at, I think we took it at the beginning of COVID. It, yeah, it was. We took it. It was. We took it during the same time. During COVID because that was at the very beginning to everything where everything was shut down. Everything was shut down, and we couldn't. We could not go out and do anything. So we signed up for it, and was like, "Well, if we're gonna have to sit here, we might as well do something." And then, um, was it? The NAR offered it at like they had super discounts cheap, either on a lot either of these free programs. classes yeah. or super cheap. And all you had to pay was like your application fee. They were trying. I think it was, a, it was an effort to do a couple of things. Number one, keep real estate agents engaged mm-hmm. when, you know, we weren't allowed to be in as many homes as before because of the shutdown. And I think, two it was also trying to keep the real estate educators in business. In it business, was right sure. when Zoom started taking off and <laughs> there was oh, still hiccups. Every Zoom class still is oh, always gosh. somebody having problems with their, their video. I think that's just like... I think we the, sent text the last time we both had glasses. It was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Help, I can't find my camera. <laughs> it's like, how long have you been doing Zoom classes now? Yeah, and the people that are in the bathroom <laughs> with the camera on doing their curling their hair, not anything else, but <laughs> just curling their hair. And oh, like, oh, gosh. Like, We've seen some stuff trip. over the last couple of years, haven't we? It's changed so much, like landscape-wise. Like, if you asked me three or four years ago if I thought we'd be in this situation, you know, that we went through, no. But, you know, it definitely... <laughs> brought in horizons um in in a lot of good ways it's, it's some brought scary in ways. new challenges new 
new things that you would you didn't think you'd ever have to consider or think about. No. Do you know what I mean? Like No, like <sighs> just uh, you know, the just being in a home now, like I'm still so aware, you know, when when they finally lifted some of the restrictions we were allowed to show homes again, it was, you know, use hand sanitizers, wear a mask, mm-hmm. wear booties, don't touch any surfaces. And now a lot of that's lifted. We're still very respectful, as always, of people's homes. But now when I go in, like if, especially if it's not a vacant home, if it's, you know, someone Someone that's still still living there, there, I am so overly cautious now. Like I, I tell my clients, you know, hey, let's just make sure we take our shoes off. Let's make sure that, you know, we don't touch anything we don't need to touch even though i know that a lot of that worry has gone Mm -hmm. i still kind of have that ingrained in me which i think is a good practice yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah yeah i mean before it was just kind of like a free-for-all you i'd have people show up at showings with their extended family and you know separate people and now i'm leery of that because you know just you don't know i'm trying to think when was it it was when we started back um, it was a it was a random showing I had probably a couple towns away, about twenty minutes or so, and uh, went to go show a house for a couple I hadn't met before. And well, by the time that I arrived there, they had already met the neighbors across the street, and there was like seven or eight of them. So of course, when I went to open the door, everybody came in. <laughs> it was an open house. <laughs> I was like, oh 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 okay, come on in. Hey y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh you never know i mean like we did um you just never know is right when we started out when i started out um especially like i was doing a lot of what we call internet leads which is people that come in from like a realtor.com request or a zillow.com mm-hmm. request you know any of those asking to view a home mm-hmm. and you're matched up with people you haven't met before and so you never really know. We do a little, you know, vetting to make sure that everything's on the up and up for mm-hmm. safety. Um, but, you know, we get there. You don't know what you're getting into. And I'll never forget. I was showing one uh, not too far from here in Kannapolis. And it was a small home. And my client shows up. It's just himself at first. I didn't see anybody with him or the, the, the customer at the time because you know, I hadn't met him before. And he gets out of the car and he says, do you mind if I bring my dog in with me? And before I could even say yes or no, this 90 pound uh, German Shepherd gets out of the back seat. No, <laughs> I don't think that's going to be allowed. Can we do something different? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we have hard conversations sometimes. Yeah. No, even before COVID, we didn't, we, if it's a service animal, that's different. Obviously this was not a service animal. He just sells his pet and his pet goes everywhere with him. Um, but no, not a service animal. <laughs> yeah. I did have a service animal at a showing one time and we definitely accommodate for that. Um, was it a peacock by chance? Not a peacock. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was another large. Did um, I see something in the news a couple of weeks ago or maybe even longer at this stage about somebody had a support alligator or crocodile or something? I believe it. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I there's. I don't know what kind of support you can get from an alligator, but to each of their own. I guess. Only if thing you're I'd say would be like after Steve a while, crocodile. Family. Yeah. <laughs> Something you see in Florida, not here. We just stick with the, uh, yeah. with the dogs and sometimes random things. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, showings always. I mean, it, everything was crazy before COVID. It got in a different spot during COVID, and now we're back to you know. It feels like it's normal, but it's never quite normal. I feel I like know. it's always the the last of of you know these these different phases. It's like children going up, right? You know, you go through the terrible twos, and then you go through the teenager phase, which. I know you're going through mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Put some more gray hairs on my head. So you're going through these different phases and it always feels like, you know, or am I ever going to get out of this situation? And then you do. And then you look back of like maybe good and bad and yeah. everything there. And Yeah. When we started in real estate, like, you know, showings were always awkward and everything. And you try to remember, you try to memorize the script of questions you wanted to ask clients and rate this house on a scale of one to 10. You know, I I still do that. I mean, that's still a good gauge just to kind of see, you know, see how, what they really feel or, 
you know, if you poke and prod, you know, you'll get the answers out of them. Or Oh, yeah. But I think when I started, it was so formulaic. I was trying to, you know, five minutes in, I'd ask this question. Sure. But, you know, before we leave, you know, I ask this question. Now it's just you go with the flow and mm-hmm. try to make it enjoyable. You know, sometimes people don't really, you know, especially if you're taking a first-time buyer into someone else's house, it can feel awkward, especially if it's being lived in and not vacant. So you try to make it a little, you know, just a little more at ease and try to calm the nerves a little bit. Gosh, I was showing, I did show some houses on Saturday and uh, I was over in a a neighborhood that, you know, definitely less updated. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I won't name it on here. I don't want to embarrass anyone, but... Uh, one of these neighborhoods with large houses, large lots, but just all built in the eighties. And it just, you know, I, I, I told my clients before we walked in, you know, expect to need some updating in here. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, and the photos hadn't even been posted online, but for a hot minute. So I don't even think they had a chance to look at them. And sure enough, you had the, the old oak paneling mm-hmm. and, you know, wood, wood for, um, uh, what I'm thinking of wood framing around the doors and everything. And, uh, the crown gold, molding gold was all frames, like not the, yeah, not yeah. the nice oh, yeah. gold that's out now. The the old bronzish gold looking, yeah, faucets everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was green carpet in one bedroom, that sort of thing. All the stuff from the seventies and eighties, and it's just fun to. Now I just step back and I just look at the reactions of people when they see these things, because they're coming into it having not experienced that before. Mm-hmm. We're a little numb to it because mm-hmm. we see it so often, like. You and I will look at photos online, and there's still some things that surprise us. But green I'm carpet is not one of those. I'm surprised that I'm not surprised sometimes. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I'm not always like it's. It's not like surprised well, as in oh, it's more surprising than disappointment. Yeah, I mean, really we were looking at go. photos just a little bit ago before we hit record, and again, there it was. Somebody taken a phone selfie picture in the mirror, just the bathroom either mirror. Either crop it or don't use it, like. Why? 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 (laughs) It's just distracting. And yeah, I mean, you see enough houses, you do, you're not so much surprised as like, oh my God, it's more like, oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Old houses. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like the the accounts like um, Zillow Gone Wild are are so fun because there's always something. There's always some way to, to, to get another reaction unfortunately yeah yeah we try to reduce it you know when when we're listing properties or walking through with people we we ask them to sometimes do a few things to hide the craziness <laughs> but not everything no all good <laughs> yeah it's uh so it's that time of year and i think you know as we we're, we're starting to wind up our little intro series here yeah we're getting close this is episode eight episode i think we planned eight. for nine yeah. Yeah. in this little series so we're winding it down we are we're, yeah you know it's heading into some little i don't know we haven't really planned it out what uh yeah, the next little some series ideas will be. On up our sleeve yeah. and um hopefully we can do our little specials yeah yeah we have a halloween special we're working on some holiday stuff mm-hmm. as well yeah and uh yeah so we're we're getting into out of out of one phase into f- another phase yeah. here be fun to see what we get going but uh in the meantime though yeah as we're wrapping up this whole little intro piece uh i think we're gonna wrap everything up next week jump into some new stuff right mm-hmm. some halloween stuff Fresh, right? I think I think so. Fresh eyes, you know. Yeah. Um, go from there. Go from there. Go from there. We got some good stuff. If you are in our local area, we got some events coming up for Halloween. We do. Yeah. If you are local, um, you can go to our pages. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook or Instagram. We are going to host a trunk or treat here at the office, and that is going to be on Saturday the 29th from 3 to 6. So we'd love yeah. to have, you know, you and the kids come out and... Come Trunk out for and some treat. F- yeah. Have some fun. Meet us in person if you're just watching online. And... Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what we can uh, add to our upcoming stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, bring the kids out, grab some candy, yeah. uh, have some stuff maybe for the adults too to keep you occupied. So uh, yeah, look forward to it. We got a lot of stuff good planned, good stuff planned. Uh, I'd and, say so. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, this is uh, another uh, start another to episode. another episode in the can here. So mm-hmm. we look forward to chatting with everybody next time. 
Thank you for joining us. I'm Regan Hildebrand. You can find me on social media at Regan. And I am Bridget Quinn, and you can find me on social media at B. Quinn Realtor. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.